Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And this video was supposed to be about a Delta Loop build because, well, field day in region one is coming up soon. And uh, we decided we wanted a Delta Loop for field day. Um, so I went out and planned to build a Delta Loop this weekend or the weekend that was. And I started out on Saturday, I started out testing, designing parts in order to make a 10 meter delta loop fit on the little dude mast. But um, I had some issues, not mechanically, I managed to both find and design the parts that I uh, actually had. But due to some other reasons, uh, the delta loop didn't happen. But I, I ended up designing stuff since I was already going and already designing stuff. So um, let's head over to the workbench. Let's take a look at what I designed, what I can use it for, and then we'll be back with an outro and some conclusions after this. So after that short intro, this is the dipole winder that I made four years ago. And uh, it's, been, it's been a good winder, but I really wanted to do, perhaps do something different. So, uh, the first thing I started out with, though, to jump back, uh, was the Delta Loop topper here for the uh, Little Dude Mast. A couple of revisions here until I got something that fit. This is not about a Delta Loop. It's, it's about that I started with a Delta Loop and it turned out to be something else. So I decided I wanted a winder, and the winder I've been using for a couple of years is, is this winder. It's uh, designed by Ham Radio Dude, or Dude Tested as he calls himself now on YouTube. And this one is beat up. I use some tape here because the the piece that holds the SO connector is, is kind of torn off and it's it's been out a couple of times. Um, I wanted something similar to this, but I wanted the feed point to come through the middle like this. And I gotta say, before I start showing off my design iterations here, that it was never my intentions to copy Sean here. But um, let's put it this way. There are only so many ways you can make a winder. And just to illustrate this, this is Sean's newest winder design, which isn't far from uh, my original winder. So winders are kind of hard to make original. But my first iteration was this. I simply put a lot of holes in it. I made the, the shape here, put a lot of holes in it, made room for the connector here. The issue with the connector though, is that since this thing is six millimeters thick, um, there aren't any exposed threads when you put the connector through. So uh, I discarded this revision and went on to the next one, which is this. I removed some of the holes I put a little bit of an indentation here uh, in order to be able to tighten the uh, the nut here uh, and uh, be able to have the connector in. But didn't really, I wasn't really satisfied. I didn't like this indentation here. So uh, I had to make another revision. And for those of you guys who watched um, the European Ham Radio Show last night, uh, or whatever night it is. It's last night when I filmed this. Uh, I had this in a printer during the show. We talked about 3D printing. And what I did was that, first of all, I removed a lot of the holes. I made an indentation all along here. So the center section is actually thinner here. Um, I left some room for a ballon here. We're gonna show that off later on. Uh, and it's only two millimeters thick here. So once I take the connector here and just loosen the nut and take off the all the parts here, we can actually, with a little bit of force, it's a little bit tight, but I'd rather have it tight than not. We have some exposed threads here. Then we just add the different parts and we tighten the nut here. And the philosophy here is that we have room for some rope here from some, for some stretch relief with these holes. We have rooms for a ballon here. And um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heat up the soldering iron and I have an already wrapped 
one-to-one -one balance here. We're just going to make a dipole winder. I'm not going to make a dipole, but just a winder to see if this concept works. Because, to be honest, I haven't tried it yet. So uh, let's heat the soldering iron up and um, see what we can do here. So um, the first thing we're going to do before we heat the soldering iron up is just attach the balance here. And yes, I know using magnet wire for a one-to-one -one balance is a little bit lossy, but bear with me. This is for demonstration purposes only. Uh, this might not make it to a final revision yet or, or make an antenna out of. But by the time you see this video, this model is already up on Thingiverse. So you can download it and... Uh, Play around with it yourself and see if it works for anything you want to do. Um, it's always fun to test new winders and new gear. And I'm using these really nice looking red zip ties because those were the ones that were closest to me at the moment. So we're going to zip it down at least in two corners, perhaps three or four. Let's see how well it sticks with only two first. And it actually sticks pretty well, so I think we're good with two. So let's take my side cutters. And cut these two off. Then what we're going to do is we're going to connect one of these to ground and one of these to the center here. Let's just measure out roughly how much we need. Uh, we're going to need a little bit more for the ground so let's just leave that over to the side here i think this is pretty much good for the center connector and the ground yeah like so so let's turn the soldering iron on and heat that up and while that heats up i'm going to find my favorite tool there's a link to this tool down below i've done a review on this it's a highly specialized tool but I have to admit that I like it. It's an enamel stripper. See how easy the enamel strips off? Just like that. Um, makes the process of stripping enamel just so much easier. So um, I'm going to pause the video while the soldering iron heats up. And then we're going to solder a little bit poorly. So we got the soldering iron here. And it's heating up. And let's just... Attach the cable through here. Just gonna make a little bit of a bend here so it, it sticks into place. Perhaps bend it a little bit out. And we're gonna take the center and just feed that into the center here. And then we'll just bend the magnet wire into place once we're done. And I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry if you can't really see the details of everything, but um, I'm doing this with an overhead cam just above the table, so it's it's hard enough nonetheless. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually, actually solder this. And I need to get some more of this uh, copper wool, steel woolish thingy for soldering, but... Um, I think that's good. That should make a proper connection. Then the center here. Let's see if we can do this um, without my soldering glasses and with a camera overhead. So feel free to comment on my soldering. Uh, I think you guys have done that in all my soldering videos, but we're we got a connection here. So let's put the soldering iron over to the side and just see if we can route these two a little bit better. Like this. Um, no, it's not a perfect match. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to spread these out a little bit. And then we're going to leave some room for... Uh, we're going to just insert a machine screw. And let's say this hole, because then we have two holes for stretch relief. So then we know approximately how long this needs to be. And I actually prefer to leave it a little bit long, just in case. So 
So let's get the stripper out and strip some of these off. See how easy it is to just remove the enamel. And as I said, this is a highly specialized tool. There is an affiliate link down below for it, though, in case you want one of these yourself. Um, I'm going to find some machine screws and some uh, ring terminals, and we'll finish this thing up. So we got a couple of machine screws here that magically appeared due to the power of video editing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just tighten this up. Then we're going to put another nut on top of this uh, once we're ready to actually make something out of this antenna. Um, and I actually forgot a couple of nuts in the bag, so uh, I'm going to put this screw on and then we'll be right back with the correct number of tools or the correct number of parts is probably the right way of saying that like that let's screw this one on also and we'll have her posts here for the dipole legs so let's solder on these ring connectors and that's i always find that tricky um i always dislike soldering around 3d printed parts and just hoping that we can make everything fit. Let's see if I can just use this one to hold everything down. I'm not sure. Let me just adjust the zoom here a little bit to see if that helps a little bit. I'm not really sure if this was good enough. We'll check for continuity. Uh, when we're done here and see if it actually has continuity or if we have to start over again. So let's, we can actually, actually we could just get this into place here somehow poorly. This, my friends, is what happens when you start out without a general plan. And just wing it. Um, if there's any doubt, I did not test build this before we started. Um, but I guess that's pretty apparent now. Um, but I usually never test stuff while I build antennas. I usually just I go for it and uh, see what happens. Let's see if we can make this happen as well. And I just got to sort my hands around in order to get this one heated up. And then a little bit of solder after a while, once this heats up, it's always a bit of a waiting game. Let's see if this sticks. Again, not the perfect solder job. That's also my point, though, to show you guys that it doesn't always need to be perfect. It needs to be good enough. Um, sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. Um, and sometimes you just have to realize that you could actually have done the job better. But uh, for this, it's just for demonstration purposes to see if this winder works. And as I said, you can find that over in Thingiverse. Then you can try it out yourself. You can give me suggestions on how to improve the design, which I'd really appreciate. Right now, we have our poorly built dipole winder feed point here. Let's zoom out a little bit and we'll get the multimeter out. So let's see if we manage to do this the right way though. Take the multimeter to continuity. We have some continuity. We have continuity that way. And actually, yeah, we managed to make this dipole winder thingy work. Um, this is the winder when it's mounted. Um, got a connector here, the bell on here, and the post to connect it here. Um, simple as that. 
let's get back to the studio view. So, we managed to build this antenna, or this dipole winder feed point, whatever you want to call it. It's not an antenna. It doesn't have the antenna parts on it. It does have some solder, though. That's magically not destroyed the winder here. Um, but uh, I'm really happy with that. But as I said, the delta loop didn't happen. What really happened with a delta loop, though, was that... Um, I had no chance of getting it in tune, or I probably could have, but um, the best SWR I could get on it was about 2 to 1, or actually it was about 2.8 to 1. And uh, after about 24 hours of fiddling with the mechanics around the antenna, I just didn't have the patience. So, as I said, I sat down and designed stuff, and I ended up with this winder design. Um, hope you like it. This is... I I'm... I posted this on Thingiverse so you can download it. You can print it yourself and see it. Um, as for other things, uh, I'm going to leave an affiliate link down below for the wire stripper that I use or the enamel stripper, which is, well, one of my favorite very specialized tools. I am also going to leave affiliate links to AliExpress for um, these connectors here since I designed it for this connector. I think these connectors, these chassis uh, hole connectors, are pretty much the same, but I'll leave links to the exact same ones as I used in case you really struggle to have your connectors fit the design. Hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any opinions on the winder, um, leave them down below. If you have any opinions on anything else, also leave them down below. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Do consider subscribing uh, and all that stuff. Well, I guess I'm, I'm all talked out now. So I'll see you down the bands. I'll see you in my next video. Until next time, my friends, 73.